and she's waving her hand at me and she goes, hey, you can't park your car here. So in this video, you're gonna see us uh, making passes where I was talking about in the shoots, of I changed position on the shoot, why I was doing that, uh, some brake issues, some shoot issues, making sure it had uh, that stuff all down and pat. And uh, it was gonna be a great weekend, but you know, hey, crap happens. Sometimes you put it into the, put it in the sand. But uh, anyways, keep watching. Alrighty, so you see what's going on there. Here's day one. Alrighty, we are here at Import versus Domestic 2024 in Martin, Michigan. So I've done this, this is the third year in a row that I've done this. Now, the first year I won it, the second year uh, I, uh, oh, I had the transmission line break right here. Or actually, I think the fit the fitting came loose. It didn't even break. The fitting came loose, sprayed oil, and just said, "Ah, screw it." Now, because it was in the final. And then uh, this year, we've pressure tested lines and all that stuff. Oh, look! Oh, holy crap! That's right. What is that? That is a carbon fiber transmission tunnel I worked on before we came here. <clears throat> so it is all covered up now. So uh, that's all cool. And uh, obviously, I'm sitting here in staging lanes. It is 95 something freaking degrees. It is hotter than all. Holy heck. Brand new. New to me. Cool vest on. Fire retardant. Cool vest that's got ice. Yeah. Not ice pack, some kind of foam pack thingy in it. It's pretty nice. Feel pretty cold right now? Yeah, it's weird. I feel, pre I feel pretty good, like hot, but. Yeah, cold all at the same time. If I had, if my head was cold, I'd probably be a lot better. <laughs> I need one for the top of my head, in a helmet or something. That would be sweet. Maybe they got a sock that has some stuff flowing through it. That sock. Mm. I I know they have a helmet that I'm sure they have a helmet that is a cool helmet. Yeah. You know? Have a whole little like ice box. You know, screw it. What's another five or ten pounds? I mean. <laughs> So you can live. Actually, you know, just kind of sitting here waiting inside the car because I can tolerate it. <laughs> so it's not, not too bad. Uh, hopefully it all fits under the straps and uh, everything fits because it does add just a little bit, but I can't imagine it adds all that much. It's weird. So anyways, um, oh, I'm not going to make a full pass on this because look at the parachutes. I totally remounted and made a new parachute mount to get the parachutes up in the air even higher in the airstream and uh because every once in a while you know one might not deploy they kind of have some problems because of the top of my roof the entire roof of this car is a wing it is the rear wing on anybody else's pro mod car whatever you want to call them just that deck lid and rear wing well you wouldn't put the parachutes way down on the ground below the rear wing well, I can't do that on my roof either because the roof is the wing and the wicker bill back there. So I've got to test it. So I'll just make like an eighth mile or a little bit more than an eighth mile pass and uh, throw the chutes. I want to make sure they come out. Everything's all good. Everything's nice the way it's supposed to be. And then because uh, there's quarter mile racing here. So um, uh, which is really fast to very fast to make a quarter mile pass and not have the chutes come out. You end up in the sand traps like Bailey. <laughs> you know, I want to put this in the sand. So that's where we're at right now. So we're going to go out there and make our first qualifying hit. I uh, haven't done anything with this car except uh, uh, put in a uh, uh, the Peterson uh, pre-filtered tank, oil tank, and built this whole transmission tunnel. So we'll see how everything goes. Thank <laughs> you. 
That was kind of slow. I think that's a that little truck over there goes 640. I think I'm not sure. Oh, he let out way early, obviously, but no, it's just qualifying, no biggie. I made him. A wrong assumption on my two-step so it took me a lo long time to build up boost and I don't think it actually ended up building a boost that it's supposed to on the line before I bumped in so um, and then like I said I wanted to just pull the parachute so to give you for instance I was going 173 at the eight and it's slow I mean that's a turd uh, 173 in the eight and I only went 172 and a quarter so it's uh I just had the shoots out really early, which is fine. But they came out, they they worked real well, so I'm happy about that. That's cool. Everything felt fine and good. I was running that that little truck, that little stick shift truck's fast, mofo. Um, I could have, I was catching them, but I wanted to pull a pair of shoots. <laughs> so, um, anyways, that's okay. We're looking at them. Um, it is so hot. I bet you the DA around here is probably. 3,500 foot today is high. So I got my little cool vest on here so I was at least marginally okay, not sweating profusely bad. Um, but anyways, yeah, I mean, only went 120, which is terrible. So I'm sure I didn't leave on boost I was supposed to. Um, so I'll have to raise my, uh, probably gonna have to raise my two-step up a little bit to get boost to build. And then uh, only went 306, terrible on a 330. So, but it's all right. I mean, that's a, you know, just a nice little shakedown pass. It's all right. So I uh, still went, you know, 691, throwing the chutes out at uh, a little before the thousand foot. So anyways, we're on it. So take the trans tunnel cover off to everybody concerned for my safety, which I appreciate. It's hot, holy crap. How nice and easy that is. Comes off. Goes on. All right, now I gotta get some gloves on, get it in there because it makes everything so tight to get the cooler lines on. All right, so I'm sitting here looking at the uh, data log from that pass. And like I said, it was a super slow, a super slow pass. Um, but you can also see here. So this is my TPS. Let's get a different color. There, that the uh, that light green. And now let's just change something else here. There we go. There, so that line right there, that is my TPS. So I was. It, that's not really lifting. It's you know that's eighty percent. That's that's basically wide open throttle. But apparently I was sissy footing something right through there, chicken footing it. But you can see right here is definitely where I lifted. Uh, that is at five. 0.1 seconds and I know I pulled the shoots before I uh, before I lifted so <clears throat> but no problem that's all cool um, what you can also see here so other things that are going on is it did end up leaving at the proper boost level left at 15 15 pounds of boost and so everything actually was pretty good except it just really knocked the wind out of it because if we look at the horsepower or I'm sorry at the uh, this dark green line right here 
that is my engine RPM and this is my first gear one two gear shift right there at that black line which is really low 7400 RPM mainly because my timing which is the dark blue line right here was really low it had taken a bunch of timing out of it for much better air so I mean we're only at uh, you know 10 degrees of timing right there in that whole area so that this this is the timing curve right there of what it followed and then it has for some reason it has a uh, a spike on the gear change that you need to figure out why that's there because I don't have that enabled so I'm trying to turn figure out why that's there but these little spikes here these are your gear change bing bing right there in the bottom so that's one two two three and uh, then lifted at uh, five so what I've done here is we go over to our graph I've changed my shift point so uh, it makes sure that it shifts at a higher rpm I've been short shifting it I want to run that out a little bit farther but if we look at my time based compensations now this is let's see I know there's a lot of stuff on here so let me get a bunch of this off of there uh, I don't care about that and drive shift actual timing don't care don't care don't care don't care uh, don't care about this or, oh wait a second Am I fine? oh yeah no that's okay yeah that was all zero okay that's cool and yeah these light blue lines right up here there you go those are my gear changes what I do like about the, the FuelTech system is it has everything all here on this one time-based screen. So from the moment you release trans brake, it's measuring your drive shaft speed, uh, everything from shift points, and everything just kind of comes up on here. But, so not unlike just a normal data log, so I can change it all from right here. So actually changing it at the data log, basically. So this uh, is my new timing curve that I have already changed. Uh, it did go down further these little pink dots went down way down in here or taking 10 degrees out now I'm only taking out doo, 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 doo. Let's see which one is that is there Well, that's nine degrees out there, but I think I took out less than that uh, before so this is uh, like I said This is a new one. And so let's take for instance. I could just move that up there And now only take out eight degrees or move it back down take out nine it's already changed. That is it right there. It it changes in the main tables, everything. So I can change my timing curves. I can change my boost. I can change engine RPM stuff. That's the engine RPM cuts. So if it if the engine RPM, if it spins a tire, for example, gets up here, it'll hit the engine RPM and it'll hit the drive shaft RPM. I can do my uh, boost curve. There's my boost curve. Here is my timing curve all on one screen all looking at my drive shaft curve engine curve timing curve of actual timing curve uh, all that stuff so there's a lot of neat things you can do here then also we can be looking at because this this car this portion of the car is still working real well we can also look at uh, our shocks do, 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 do. where'd you go there we go uh, so front left and right rear so from moment of launch see here right here one seven eight uh, so it drops down one inch and then basically stays down so it stays squatted down I probably should be able to get it to come back up just a little bit more but that's not a real big deal and this is the uh, left front and right front uh, so it carries the front tire both front tires are fully extended here for one two it didn't feel like it was doing that much to tell you the truth 
the right front looks like it just starts making contact and coming down at three seconds so that is 330 foot so it's carrying the front tires just according to there or, or at minimum it might not have the tire even if it didn't have the tire all the way up it might just be totally extended so that might be why it didn't seem like it was all that high um, and here it's definitely down the right front has definitely come down through here and when you lift so right up here is where he lifted you can definitely see the car then nose dies over and all of a sudden right here you see it lift comes down and front end goes boom right down which all makes sense so anyways I changed shift points and basically uh, in fact that's all I did is change uh, change shift points and I just put like took a little bit less timing out on my uh, re launch retard curve and uh, that would just affect my 60 foot and then the shift points will should just affect the the overall because it's uh, when I make the short shift here I'll show you this one here too Nate so this short shift so if we let's go back up here again so in that engine RPM that dark green line so it jumps up takes off it's accelerating not accelerating super fast because at the same time timing's coming out of it even though boost is increasing timing is coming out too much timing and then all of a sudden it hits the gear change right here it actually kind of jumps down a little bit and then actually because it's making boost and trying to ramp some timing back into it it starts accelerating the motor hard again but right through here it basically sounds like a snowmobile because my two three gear change which is right there it actually goes up in rpm when I when it makes the gear change from 85 to 86 I think that's basically the torque converter doing that uh, just a power torque converter slash where I'm shift where it's getting shifted at should be shifting a lot higher than that probably closer to 9,000 so that's what we're gonna try doing on this next pass and the first gear gear change is kind of a, a big deal um, so if you're if you're going faster more mile an hour wheel speed however you want to say it. if you're going faster in first gear when it makes the gear change and then it has momentum it's all taken off there and then when it hits the two three gear change it should be much different because the car will be going physically faster and not making the converter work as hard as when it's short shifted so that's why it kind of sounds like a snowmobile out there and why it doesn't have defined gear changes in it because it's powering through the converter and I'm not spinning the converter fast enough to make it a couple. So anyways, we're gonna try doing something like that see if I can get a little more defined uh, line in my gear change. for a second <laughs> i tell you that but felt funny at the top end so I lift it early did you click it off early again yeah <laughs> yeah you still set fast time oh uh, how fast did it go 655 i think you said oh uh, okay yeah i lifted way early <laughs> yeah. well you pulled the chutes before i pulled the chutes before <laughs> yeah, i know
Yeah. Uh, it was hauling through the eighth mile that doing that gear change from the one two because it went 181 in the eighth, which is good. 434, which sucks, but uh, it still only had a 116 60 foot. It really came on strong there, and it was 206 mile an hour in the thousand foot. And I pulled the parachute right around there, and it went six where'd it go 659 197 with the shoots out so um i'll take a, take a look at the data and see what it looks like i it seems to be running fine but i felt the one two gear change didn't feel the two three gear change it was accelerating but it wasn't accelerating like it was earlier <laughs> and so and then you're going fast and it's like i didn't even see a guy side me and i just pulled the shoots early because i'm still worried about the shoot deal but i'm pretty much over it now i think i'll be fine so i think on that pass it because it ran the front half such a p4 60 foot left to uh i mean it was better than once before it went 120 at the time before it went 116 here uh, i mean it's got to go 10 something 109 uh, so, uh, and it only went 296, but like I said, boy, it went 181. So like 100, 181 should have been like 230 and a quarter. But, uh, but I pulled the parachutes. So it was on the parachute when I went across the line, I guarantee you that. Um, but anyways, we'll look at, uh, dad, <coughs> excuse me, dad in the morning because it's after midnight right now. And I think everything's great on it. It's run sweet. Run good getting out of throttle or you know pulling shoots early doing a whole deal so and, uh, I think we're still I think we're number one so anyways uh, and I haven't been quarter mile racing in quite a while so I'm not gonna lie to you it's fast <laughs> so they can the eighth mile it's because all of a sudden you go past the eighth mile I see the eighth mile go and it's like it's, it's still going I'm like, ah, you pull a shoot so Take the sound like a wussy, but I'll get over it. It'll be fine tomorrow. Right now here's day two third round of qualifying and uh gal darn it That was pretty good. Somewhere around there. I think I still lifted a tick early. That freaking quarter mile is long. Holy cow. That freaking quarter mile is long. <laughs> when you're doing eighth mile stuff for a long time. I'll tell you what. I've been waiting to say this. You need a toe back? All right, we're in uh, qualifier number four. She's got to get after the 
the, the short stuff more, refiguring that all out. <laughs> So I'll just give you a recap of everything that happened or why I put the car into the end of the track, into the sand, which is actually P-Stone over there at the US 131. So I'm making the pass, last round of qualifying, I'm the fastest guy there, uh, and just making, not even making full passes yet. Um, I pulled the parachutes really early, before the thousand foot mark I had put the chutes fully deployed. You'll see that in the data log and in the video. And uh, I hit the brake, and there was, there was absolutely nothing there. Um, I would like to hear everybody's comments. I think I got it figured out. I don't think that uh, it's possible to boil the fluid out of it, but I do think it's possible to boil something out of it, because I had brakes on, on the way back. I was stopping the tow vehicle that was towing me back to the pits with the brakes on the car, but there was no brakes on the car going down the track. Zero. So, I put it in the sand, I'm like super upset, like because I'm mad because I think it's going to destroy the entire car and all the paint that they just put on the car, so I'm really upset, or mildly upset as Nate says, and uh, so I'm out of the car, you know, and people are running around, they're finally coming down the other track, oh my gosh, you okay, I'm fine, I'm looking at my car, and I'm starting to feel better already because at least the front end's still on the car, and uh, so... And then people are all coming up to me, all concerned and all this other stuff. And here comes my wife. She's got this, this look of concern on her face and she's waving her hand at me and she goes, hey, you can't park your car here. <laughs> one, one of the multiple reasons why I love my wife. So apparently she could tell by looking at my face, I wasn't extremely upset at that point in time. So. Uh, God bless her heart. It's one of the reasons, multiple reasons why I love her. Somebody could come in and say that. But, uh, so we're looking at everything. And I'll show you the front end here. Neil's over here picking stuff out. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like a lot of damage. But there's a lot of stuff that's underneath the car. Uh, sensors, stuff like that. Uh, the front end, you can look here inside. No damage. Nothing broke, cracked, or anything. So, really like static about that. And then even the paint for going into the, I figured I was only probably going like, I don't know, maybe like 50 mile an hour or so into the rocks. So you can see right here, just on the bottom of the chin spoiler, a bunch of you know paint damage there, but nothing up here. I mean, it is just spot on the money. Nice. Outside a dog's foot that's just standing there. Yep. So anyways, uh, super happy about that. Just one break? One break. Front, all toe breaks off. It was not only asked, there's nothing. 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 Do you have a loop book at all, or do we need the massage for everything? Uh, I don't have a loop book. Like, 
Why is this thing not stopping? No brakes. So I didn't figure out what happened there. Both chutes were out. Both chutes, chutes so did the whole thing. How fast did they go? 654. Yeah, I think crap. How old's name on now? 271. 271. 211. Jump. I won't drive. Hop in, Steve. And it's off. Now we're trying to figure out if I actually went through the sand trap farther than Tom did. So I think we'll, we'll measure it all out, but I doubt they measured theirs. That, that pipe is wet. Is it? Well, I thought... Well, this is what that looks like. That's not modern art with uh, all the pea stone in there. What's that thing weigh? Like another five, ten pounds? Oh, it's more than that. <laughs> yeah, right, the artist. There is rocks everywhere, and it just had the brakes fail. It just freaking failed. So. And I've had problems if I've not pulled the chutes, it will, sometimes it'll overheat the brakes and it'll get real light. And, but I always stop. And this time I just, I would hit the brake and there was nothing there. So something has happened because both chutes came out. Everything was all cool. So we're just going to get all the stones out of this thing and start looking at what's done. It started raining, so I don't know. And I think I got a, a hurt turbo, not sure. Uh, it looks like it was off. I mean, there's rocks freaking everywhere. So getting all the rocks out of this thing's a mother trucker. Um, but anyways, we're gonna. I'm gonna start it up, make sure it's not hurt, or doesn't look like the turbos ate any rocks. But I think this turbo is bad. Something happened to it. So uh, the, uh, I think that's what made it smoke on diesel. We'll find out do some more uh, working on it but like I said it's raining right now all right so we we uh, got all the rocks cleared of all the belts I just wanted to make sure everything's okay there and so we'll so I just bumped it real quick like this just trying to make sure that it wasn't you know bound up or something stupid because it was shut off when I got into the rocks should be able to see that from the video I think um so we'll start it up here when i back up over there ben. good i mean i don't think they're the smoke must have been from the turbos hurt yeah which i it was hurt in the first place so i think we'll uh have to figure out what's going on there oh that's why i grabbed that light for i was gonna look down in there and see if it was touched down if that turbo touched down and uh if it's touched down then it's definitely hurt um so we're gonna clear out the rocks and stuff and 
Then we're gonna start looking, making my way through the brakes here and seeing what in a French toast is going on. Because uh, if I can't figure that out, obviously I'm not gonna go make another pass. So, uh, pull I'm your not, master cylinder reservoir off. Yeah, pull the master cylinder reservoir off. What the brake fluid looks like. Yeah, because I have the big dot five brake fluid in it, all the bells and freaking whistles. And it's probably raining now enough that I bet you it's going to keep on raining if I had to guess. This is going to put us way late anyways. Way, way, way late. Um, well, I guess we're just going to play it by ear. I'm going to show you. Whoops. So this is the pass, okay? And actually the pass is decent. Now look at the video here. You can see the parachute is fully deployed before the thousand foot. So everybody's giving me crap this weekend because I've been pulling a chute so early. That's because I'm like wanting to make sure they're working. And then, well, at first I wanted to make sure they're working because they put them way up higher. And then it's, uh, the, the brakes have been like, been martial every once in a while, you know, but it's always stopped. Um, that time, I mean, it, you can see right here in the video, this thing is, player chutes are fully deployed. Now what that smoke is, I'm not sure if that's turbo or there's a whole bunch of freaking oil over on the front right passenger side brake caliper. No freaking idea what that's all about. So anyways, you see we just started up and it is, it's not broke, there's nothing wrong with the engine, which is great. But here I'll show you, uh, I can show you uh, when I... You can see, I can see exactly when I pull the parachute, which is right here at uh, 5.8 is where I pulled the parachute and then continued to drive through the parachute. So that was deployed, but you know, the uh, G meter starts going down, which this is the G meter st starts going down. And then where I fully lift is there. Now the interesting thing to see is brake pressure. Now, if you look right here, uh, where'd it go? Let me bring it up here because I monitor my brake pressure because I use brake pressure to stage the car. So I stage the car. It it maintains brake pressure at 441 right there. You want to cut, go in there? 441. It's this purple line right here. So it goes down to, I let go of the button. It's got actually a little bit of residual brake pressure that it doesn't release all the way at 17. Down track, it's like 10 pounds of brake pressure. Probably can figure that out. You know, honestly, now that I'm thinking about that, I wonder if that's. What, I wonder if that's what makes the brake so hot. There's a little bit of residual brake pressure there. Now, here's the end of the pass right here. Okay, here's the end of the pass. You see these purple lines? That is my brake pressure spiking. So, I let off. The parachute is fully deployed. Way back here right here parachute has deployed right here i let off the throttle here the first bump or first brake pedal hit that i hit is right there at 6.8 which was 195 pounds that's not enough to scrap squat then all of a sudden then i hit it again it's 231 at least it's better then it was i hit it again 104, 38, 44, 47, I give it a second to try cooling off, literally a second, now I'm starting to go, oh crap, I'm going to run in the sand, this is where you start hearing me yelling to the camera, because I'm mad about it, yeah, 63 on that one, 54 on that pump, you gotta keep in mind, brake pressures are in the 2000s, in the couple thousand range, in order to be functioning. 40 pounds. Heck, it has less brake pressure here than it does going down track. Uh, 50 pounds of pressure there, 10 pounds. So all these little it, itty bitty spikes are just the brake, brakes hitting. Um, let's see, so I must have shut the engine off. The engine's still running there. Of course, it's hard to tell when the engine shuts off because the torque converter is still turning the engine. It doesn't cut off and do a clean shut. Well, actually it does right here. There you go. 
right there. So right here, it's at zero RPM. Still no mother freaking brake pressure, which ticks me off. I had one last pump before I went into the sandbox, the stone box actually. It's not sand here, it's stone, pea stone. Got up to a whopping like 100 pounds. So, um, what I have found out, unfortunately, is I've always relied on the brakes to stop the car, which is wrong. I shouldn't have been doing that. And because I just thought that was kind of normal. And I haven't done a bunch of quarter mile racing since last year, so I'm glad this didn't happen, or two years ago, so I'm glad this didn't happen on like, uh, you know, sick week or something like that. So, um, but the brakes have always worked. So something happened here where the brakes overheated, got hot, because they're working on the way back. They're working right now. Uh, so they've gotten hot, they've overheated. I have dot five fluid in it. I have the uh, uh, TVM, extreme heat, uh, brake fluid in it. Everything's all set there. But uh, um, I think because maybe that residual brake pressure, maybe that is overheating the brake and dragging it down on the car, I don't know. Uh, but you see, at, uh, before the 1,000 foot mark, when I deployed the parachute, the car was going 215, so probably would have went 230 or so. Probably would have went, a, maybe would have went a 40, 40 and 230, or 230-ish range. Because um, it ran the front half marginally well, no marginal. Uh, went 434, uh, which is slow, a little bit slow, should go to 20s. Um, but anyways, well, oh, there's freaking rocks all over. You see the pain down below? It's in the hall pavement. Oh, it's in the hall. It's every freaking where. If I see more, I'll bring yeah. it out. So, so the, uh, um, anyways, that, it is what it is. So there is, I'm not going to take this car. The motor's not hurt. Nothing's wrong there. I'm not, I don't even know if the turbo's hurt. I'm not sure if that wasn't oil that brake fluid is sprayed out around it or something. I don't know. But anyways, there's, the engine's fine. It's not hurt. You saw it run. Um, and I'm not gonna take it back down the track. Oh, I'm sorry. But the parachute got distracted. So the parachute. So these are uh, uh, these are the same parachutes I've been running, but I've been relying on brakes for a long time. You know, I just thought that was the way it was. If I didn't have brakes, the car wasn't gonna stop. Uh, and then, so Skinny Kid comes over and goes, in, in typical Skinny Kid fashion, what the fudge are you doing running that motor at the parachute on your car? That POS can't run that motherfucking parachute. You gotta run this parachute, and which is the top fuel parachute. You have to run it 12 foot wide, 12, I think they call it the 12 4 Simpson parachute, because uh, that is the great big parachute for the top fuel cars. And he goes, uh, I've been watching you. You pulled the parachute before the thousand foot. You, if you can't stop the car on the you should have stopped the car without any brakes and had to restart the car and drove it off the track. It should have been that bad. I go, okay, well, I didn't know. <laughs> he says, call me up Monday, I'll get you the right pair of shoes so you can stop your freaking car. Okay, cool. So the next time I'm out down this car, we're going to, well, I'm gonna pull them early just so I can make sure I feel them first. But uh, he says, if you pull both pair of shoes on a 3,600 pound car, going 230 mile an hour, you should stop the car without hitting the brakes on long shutdown tracks like what this is. This is a long shutdown track. And I'm going, okay, man, it's already on. So anyways, it's gonna be, uh, I think I gotta look at my brakes. I gotta talk to, to the guys at TVM. Here, give me a call. Duck Cook, give me a call. I need to fix this thing. And uh, for that part of it, and then uh, see what's wrong there. What I did, what I did wrong. I'm not blaming you guys. I, I did must have done something wrong or something. Something's not right. It does have Mark Williams brakes on the back, and that Mark uh, TBM's on the front. Mark Williams on the back. Um, so something's going on there. And then I'm gonna order the correct parachutes, the great big boy parachutes, the pro, uh, the top fuel parachutes, and uh, come back. But obviously, I'm not gonna run this car down the track again because I don't feel like putting in the in pebbles again because I have no confidence that it is going to stop. Uh, runs fine, runs great. Probably would have, probably really should have went 640s on. It's at a low boost tune right now. It's only at 50 pounds of boost, which is nothing for this engine, for these cars, or for this car. So 640, 230 is what it probably would have went. And uh, so anyways, is what it is. Uh, I was in it to win it. Now I'm in it to just go home with it without, it didn't, it didn't F up my paint job. 
That's good. So it didn't F up the paint. That's what the comments on Instagram yeah, are so saying. Yes, yeah, so it did not F up the paint, didn't F up the body, didn't F up, really didn't F up anything except just a freaking bunch of rocks everywhere. I gotta make sure I get it all picked out of everything. And uh, we'll be back at it with the right stuff. I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.